Before we start, I want you to, I request you to uh, say special prayers for uh, people in Pakistan who are suffering from devastating floods and even those who uh, um, are surviving have lost their homes and their cattle and their crops etc so please pray to allah to show mercy to those people and secondly for uh, the people who are sick especially brother jalil in italy who is very ill and needs our prayers and uh, brother ali and uh, his daughter is ill and she needs our prayers and of course everyone else who uh, is in difficulty today i'm going to uh, continue with what i did two weeks ago and the title was this which is chapter 3 verse 102 and i've given the uh, this sermon, the title, Hold Fast by Allah's Rope, Part 2. Wa'tathimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu wa skuru ni'matallahi alaykum iz kuntum a'at Allah 
and hold fast by the covenant of Allah all together and be not disunited and remember Allah's favor to you when you were enemies then he united your hearts so by his favor you became brethren and you were on the brink uh, and you were on the brink of a pit of fire then he saved you from it thus allah makes clear to you his messages that you may be grateful sadaqallahu liyul azim and i want to talk about this verse i talked about it uh, in general terms when i delivered the khutbah from berlin but now I want to come to specific things. And uh, the first of uh, these is my trip to Berlin. Ajimat, a very small community, very few people. They decided to build a mosque in Berlin in 19... 19- 20. This is more than a hundred years ago. But they were dedicated and they collected funds and uh, um, they devoted parts of their income for this task. And in 1924, a magnificent mosque was completed in Berlin. And uh, <clears throat> Then came the Second World War and the mosque was damaged and uh, in that we must remember the lady who was the caretaker of the mosque, Amina Mosler, who although there was bombing and everything, she never left the mosque. She made sure that the mosque was open five times every day for prayers. And even when the Russian tanks and guns were attacking the mosque and advancing towards the mosque, she she still remained there. And uh, the mosque therefore needed repair. Some uh, patchwork repairs were made every now and then and so on. But a few years ago, the mosque was in need of major repairs. That mosque is now recognized by the German government as a a historical mosque. And uh, therefore there are restrictions on how you can renovate it. And the uh, the government uh, monuments department got involved and uh, they appointed architects and so on. And the architects came up with a huge bid. And they said it will take 10 years to repair this mosque. It's such a huge task. But we all pulled together. We said, no, 10 years is too long. We want this done in our lifetimes. How many of us are going to be alive in 10 years? And we managed to do it in three years. And we managed to raise funds from all the different sources. When you think about how small our community is, and if you ever go to Berlin, go and uh, look at this mosque in the Brenner Strasse. And you will marvel. <clears throat> you will marvel at the achievement of this small community. And how did we achieve it? It was by acting on just this one verse of the Holy Quran. Hold fast by Allah's rope and be not disunited. And God says, it was Allah's favor that you were 
each other's, each other's enemies. You were going to kill each other. But he made you friends and he made you brothers. And so this disunity and fighting each other, God says, is like being on the brink of a pit of fire. And you see, this this applies to communities, this applies to families. It applies to all the groups which live together, whether it is a family. What happens to a family that is fighting all the time? If one person, one brother or sister or someone needs help, they go to their brother or sister. What are they going to say? If they're fighting, what are they going to say? Are they going to help them? No, they're not. And it can lead to big problems. It can lead to small problems. But when people are united and they pull together, that doesn't mean that they don't disagree with each other. Yes, if you are presented with a problem and you have to solve it, you sit down and you discuss it. One person is going to say that, you know, this is the solution. Another person is going to say that is the, that is the solution. But once you decide what the solution is, whether you were in favor or you were against it, you must all pull together. This is the only way to success. If you just end up arguing all the time, then how are you going to uh, how are you going to uh, achieve anything? Take the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's example. Muslims heard that the enemy was coming to attack them. And it was quite a large force. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad called a meeting and he suggested that Muslims stay in the city in Medina and defend it from inside. But the majority decided against the Prophet's advice that no, we are going to give, give battle in open field. And once the majority had decided, the Holy Prophet went into his house and he put on his armor. And when he came out, people said, well, we're very sorry, we disagreed with you and so on. And he said, it didn't, doesn't matter. The majority has decided. Now we are going to stick to that decision. No family, no government, no state, no organization can work unless you agree on your fundamental principles. If you're going to have dictatorship, then have dictatorship. You know, one man decides. Whatever he decides, everyone does. But if you're going to have democracy, then once the majority has decided on something, then all your differences should disappear. And in the countries where it, this doesn't happen, we see there is complete chaos. There are elections, one party forms the government and the other one, rather than helping the government by pointing out the errors in their policies, set out to disrupt the government. So the government can't govern. So who suffers? If the government in this country can't govern, I mean, at the moment, we don't have a government. We're having elections for uh, who's going to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. And he's going to be the, uh, the Prime Minister. But, I mean, look at it. Energy prices have gone up today. It doubled. People's salaries haven't doubled. Now, if gas and electricity prices are going to go up, then you're going to, uh, uh, everything's price is going to go up. But there is no one to decide what to do. 
because we don't have a prime minister. So this is why you need someone who's the boss, who's in charge, and you need a method for making decisions. But God says whatever method you have, never become disunited, never start bickering. Once you've made a decision, then stick to it. And we've seen the results of that. Both Ajimat stuck together and we completed, I've just come back from Berlin and we completed the repair of this magnificent mosque. And people are astounded because they think there are millions of Lahori MDs. There are not millions of Lahori MDs. In the whole world, maybe there are, I don't know, a quarter of a million, something like that. But because they held together with the rope of Allah, they achieved this magnificent achievement. And then <clears throat> I came back and there was a three-day conference in Berlin, uh, in, in, in Oxford at Oxford University. So I attended that. Um, and uh, it was in a way a very good affair. Why? Because what Lahori Amdis have been saying for 125 years, these Muslim academics and professors and researchers are coming to exactly the same conclusion now, 125 years later. And it was great to see one speaker after another saying that unless Muslims in general start changing their thinking, and then Islam will not succeed in the world. I mean, in those countries where Muslims are in a majority, you can force people to be Muslims, you can force them to do things and so on. But what about the United States? What about Canada? What about the United Kingdom? What about Europe? Muslims are not in a majority here. How will they cope? And there, there were many things. Position of women. People were saying, why can't women be leaders? And I pointed out that in 1978, we elected a lady as president of Ajama. Many times, ladies have uh, delivered the Eid sermon and the Friday sermon and so on. And they were astonished that there is this organization that has been doing this for over a hundred years. And uh, there were some ladies there who were arguing that, you know, women should be allowed to lead prayers and all this kind of thing. And I just said, well, in our organization, in our community, they do. But the point I want to make is this. These changes do not happen in one day. It's taken 125 years to get to this point. And the founder of the movement, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Sahib, the Mujaddid, he said that these people won't listen to me. Their children won't listen to me. Their grandchildren won't listen to me. And he said once their great-grandchildren have died and passed on, then after that, people will start listening to what I'm saying. And this conference in Oxford was an example of that. Apart from one issue on everything else, the fact that Hadith needs to be treated with care because it was written 300 years after the Holy Prophet Muhammad, the fact that the Holy Quran should be our primary source of knowledge and information. Once the Holy Quran says something, then there's no point in coming up with some other book and saying it says this because the Holy Quran is the book of Allah, the word of God. 
So when Allah has spoken and decided and said something, then why should you say that some other book written by a human being says something, something different? And of course, <clears throat> there are some negative things which happen as well, to which we have to respond. Some years ago, I heard that a news channel uh, ran a program on which they made very insulting remarks about uh, the Ahmadiyya movement and the founder of the Ahmadiyya movement and so on. And they were saying that if you see an Ahmadiyya, you should beat them up, you should kill them and so on and so forth. I don't remember the exact words, etc. So some people complained about that program and I was one of those people to say that, look, you know, this is not right that you should air programs in which people tell others to attack a community. Yes, you can disagree, you can discuss, that is fine. We're not asking everyone to agree with us. And then um, it went into an investigation and it went on and on and on. And last week, I uh, saw a news item which said that uh, that television station is no longer broadcasting and its owner has been fined £40,000. All of these things, whether positive or negative, come about because, as God says, hold fast to covenant of Allah. Hold fast to covenant of Allah. You depend on Him for help. You don't go to A and B and C and you don't start negotiating, uh, you know, as people do in politics. I'll support you in the parliament if you make three people of uh, my political party ministers in the government and so on. You solely and solely depend on God, on Allah, whatever your difficulties. You pray to God and your prayer should be, O oh Allah, make me steadfast. Never let me complain and say, why has this happened to me? And if we, you, you know, I just mentioned one verse of the Holy Quran to you. And the results of following its teachings. Can you imagine how successful we'll be if we followed all the teachings in the Holy Quran? So, I want to say congratulations to you, both for the Berlin Mosque, the Oxford Islamic Conference, and even the banning of this uh, television station that was creating hatred and division amongst Muslims rather than trying to unite them. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafana wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareemun Malikun Barrow Fun Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahduhu, and a spainohu, and a stock for who were no minu behave, and a tabakalu, alahi, and now you will la him in Minshururi and Fosena, or Minsayatea, Malina, Mingyahi, Hilla, Fala, Mudilla, who 
ஜிபிலக்கும்ஜிக்கர் <coughs> அல்லாஹு அக்பர் அலைஹிம் <laughs> அக்பர் அக்பர் <coughs> 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 ஒரு 
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ السلام علیکم This is the end of uh, the Friday service for uh, today. You need to say the two Sunnah prayers on your own afterwards to finish the prayer. But uh, our next broadcast will be on Monday at 7 p.m. to the Burul Quran and uh, at 7.30 reflections on the Holy Quran. So I hope we'll see you there. Until then, with the prayer that whoever you are and wherever you may be, I take my leave of you. Assalamu alaikum, Khuda Hafiz. Goodbye. Can I talk?